Hey everyone, it's January 23rd and you are here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I am Elizabeth, I'm the Community Manager, so good to see everybody here. Um, as always, this is under our Chaos Code of Conduct, so just keep that in mind as you interact with us. And of course, again, as I reinforce every time, but I will still say it, uh, you can keep your cameras off, we don't care. Keep them on if you want to, that's fine. Whatever you wanna do, we're very, very easy here because we're just glad you came. We're just happy to see you. If you have not added your name and you would like to do that, here's where you can. Just tell us um, if you do like to have background music on while you work. It seems like a lot of people do. It kind of depends. Yeah, I'm the same. It kind of depends on my mood. Yep. I agree, Rhoda, it does. <laughs> I would be lost without it, I think, so. Um, all right, let's jump in because I know we have some stuff on our agenda here. So I just wanted to say a shout out to our upcoming guest facilitators, Ruth and Mary Blessing. So um, please be kind to them <laughs> as they facilitate. Um, I'll be out for a couple of weeks going to Chaos Con and then State of Open Con and taking a couple of days off over in Europe as well at the end. So I will be out, but Ruth and Mary Blessing will be showing up in my stead. Uh, I think Mary Blessing is also going to be running the newcomer hangout um, on those uh, next few weeks too. So, um, and she's also going to be doing the DEI working group for me. So, so she's get, she's getting a lot. Um, but we, I really, really, really appreciate her, and and Ruth and their willingness to jump in. So thank you both to them. Uh, next item on our agenda is a DEI project badging update. So I think this is the new date, January 26th. Yes. I'm seeing yes. Okay, good. Um, everybody will, will, will be able to talk about this on our blog and in public and everywhere else, um, which is great that it's happening right before ChaosCon, I think. So we can talk about it there as well. Uh, anybody want to add anything? I mean, <laughs> this has been a perpetual agenda item for uh, years. I don't know, a long time. So. I don't know what else there is to say, but. Uh, Elizabeth and I had a chance to see a uh, GitLab blog post that's going to occur, you know, sometime towards the end of the month. It looks really nice. So just on that. Uh, and then I think we're just, we're adding just a few little minor details right now. The biggest question is just, we have a new button that is for applications for projects that are self-hosted. That looks pretty much sorted out at the moment. Um, with just some really small wording changes, I think. That's it. Oh, one other thing. For the future, like down, like maybe in the summer, we had talked about connecting back with communities who have participated in the program and asking, you know, how they think it has changed their project or how it has helped them reflect on DEI metrics or how they've learned from other projects. So I think this is something that in the summer we should start thinking about how we reach out to and, and talk with projects who have participated in the program. Just something to put on the agenda for later. Great. Anything else anybody on that team wants to add or? I think you covered it. All right, fair enough. Does anybody have questions? We should also leave space for that. All right, fair enough. Um, item number two, a common working group is being renamed to the metrics development working group, um, primarily because nobody really knows what common means anymore, because it doesn't really apply. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't because <laughs> we no longer really do metrics development in different working groups. So um, this uh, will more accurate, accurately describe what the group is doing. There is a new we just I just renamed the slack to this so if you're looking for that that's where it is now it's not under common anymore. There's a lot of uh, 
yeah, common does mean everything and nothing <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> um, so we're, there's a lot, like this is gonna have to filter out through a lot of places, but we mentioned common a lot in the whole, all of chaos. So things from repos to docs to website, um, calendar, like everything. So um, be patient, I'm working on it. <laughs> Uh, we'll get there, but um, probably next week I will maybe ask if anybody, I will probably ask people to just keep an eye out for it. And if you see it, say something like <clears throat> submit an issue, um, maybe even in the community, like if you don't even know where to put it, just put it in the community repo or the newly named, to be named metrics development working group repo, just drop an issue somewhere um, and just let me know or hit me up on Slack. That's fine too. Um, should be done by but if you see you mention a comment, just let me know. Um, do we have questions on that? I don't have a question on the renaming, but I do have a question for the metrics development working group. Go for it. Fair enough. So I did post this in Slack. Uh, for the metrics development working group. And I just wanted to bring it up here as well. Um, so I, we have a lot of metrics that are being asked to be deployed by different working groups or um, that may exist in particular pieces of software that we haven't published as chaos metrics. So they exist kind of in the world where there's a request for them to exist. Um, but we don't have them published on the website. So one of my, my, I guess, I don't know if concerns is quite the right word, but the, the gap between metric, the request for metrics and metrics models is going to outpace our ability to write them. So writing a metric does take a little bit of time. Um, there are issues just around kind of getting the template up and going. There are times where we have to reach out to people to get information for particular metrics. And all of this just takes time. Takes time. Yeah. It just takes a lot of time. And my concern is, is that the gap between these two things is going to widen over time. And I may be incorrect on that. That's just, that's an assumption that I have. And so I, I've been thinking about how we can overcome <laughs> that. So we either live with a widening gap, as may or may not exist, as I'm kind of presenting it as it does exist. Um, and so my, my suggestion in the, in the Slack channel was to actually reduce the amount of information that we put into a metric definition. So right now we have, say, seven, six or seven headings, according to the template. And what I was proposing is that we take it down to two. Um, so clarify the gap. Is it between metrics and software or metrics and something else? I just want to make sure I understand the gap that you're so I had, It's it's both. So it's it's two things, I think. So it's metrics and software. So there are metrics that are deployed in software mm -hmm. that haven't been articulated on the website. Yeah. Then the other is um, that metric or metric model requests that say come from the university OSPO working group. It's not in software, right? right. But it's it's before, like we have that long list from the app ecosystem working group. Right. And so they're not necessarily deployed, but there's a request to have them published as metrics. So both, I think it's two things. One is from software and one is from just requests from other folks in the community. Okay. Uh, and so the proposal, I mean, it's not, I'm not like stuck to the proposal was to just simply have a definition and objective sections. That's it for a metric that we define what the metric is and what the objectives of that metric would be. That's probably not optimal, but that's where I started. <laughs> and so the idea was to reduce the number of headings that we have just so we can actually write these, I think, a little bit faster. That's but odd. Vinod made a point in chat about things that are optional in the template. So uh, if you uh, if you open the Elizabeth, can you share that link I have sent? So if you look at the template, we have the name, 
description and objective. These are the three things Matthew proposed. They are already there. If you look at the implementation, all of them are optional. Like if we don't have, we can still release a mat uh, metric and go Perfect. with it. And Perfect. references are, if you are, uh, as a, we are developing, uh, these are there. If there's no reference, it's again optional and known contributors. So the template is already like simplified version. Rather than keeping, we have clearly defined filters and these are optional. So I think your point is there. And yet we have the flexibility to accommodate if we get something extra out of it to make it more uh, understandable for everyone who is cool. reading the metric. Very helpful. So in this, would would implementation as a top level heading be optional as well? We can make it. Like if you look at everything within that is optional. So we can make implementation as a optional. And if there is a possibility, we add it. If not, then we just leave it. There's no data out of it. Okay. Well, that's super. Yeah, that's great. Do you want me to make I that? Oh, I just also want to just mention that for for people who want to contribute to the chaos project and are looking for something to do, we have whole lists of metrics that we want to define and just haven't gotten around to it. And this is this is probably one of the most mm -hmm. accessible ways to contribute to the chaos community because you just have to you just have to understand what people might want to what to know what sorry what people might want to know about this metric and will help you in the metrics development working group flesh it out. So this is a really, really good way to get more involved if you're looking for, for a way to get better engaged in the project. So if I understand the only real change we're going to make or proposing to make is um, make the implementation better optional, right? Yes. Cool. All right. Any other? That would be great. That's great. Thank you. Does somebody want that action item or I can do it right now? I can do it. You want to do it, Vinod? Okay. Yeah. Well, Vinod. <clears throat> cool. What other questions do we have, topics around this do we want to talk about? I'm good. Okay. I just want to add to Don's point about it being a great place for newcomers. I would plus one that. And if you're not sure if you're super intimidated or you're just really not sure what that's about, just come to the meeting or you can go back and watch some of the previous meetings um, just to kind of see how that goes. We haven't developed an actual metric in a while, so you would have to you're going to have to go back away. But um, deep, deep in the archive, dig deep. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, you can certainly show up and just see if it's your thing. Um, and it's really, uh, it's really not that difficult as, as uh, Don mentioned, because we do it together. So it's a collaborative effort. It's not like you have to be put on the spot or anything. Yeah, Sophia, go ahead. Um, so realizing this will be focused on net new metrics, um, where would we think about places to discuss existing metrics if you have a thought on how to revise some things? I know a lot of those came out of working groups that may or may not still exist. So I'm just kind of curious, like say I flag an issue an existing metric, where, where would that conversation happen? I think it depends on what the issue is. Uh, that's my personal feeling. Others might have something else to say. But if it's like a typo or something small, then you can just drop it in this metrics development. If it's like a whole rework or something that is going to be really specific to that context, then I would say bring it up in the Slack channel because all those Slack channels, I believe, still exist. So bring it up there maybe. Um, and if it applies to a specific context like OSPOs, for instance, then that would be also be another place to discuss it, I think. Okay. Would, would, the, would everybody agree with that? Like, is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. I just have to figure out what Slack channel it's in. Yeah, we have a lot, but <laughs> I 
I think they're all still there. Like I'm pretty sure they are. And they may have been archived, but we can certainly unarchive them and okay. you know, continue that conversation. Or heck, even in the general uh -huh. channel, you can drop it in there and people will talk. So. I'll do that. I'll, I'll put it in Slack versus derailing this conversation now. Are you fine? Are you fine? <laughs> Just, if you do put it in general, make sure you, you do an at channel because um, I think everybody, no, I'm just kidding. Please don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> there's like 1900 people in there. So, yeah. I mean, you can, you can do anything you want, but there's always a few repercussions yeah. to your actions. A, yeah. I'm quite judicious about when I use that. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I always, and it always yells at you too. It's like, you're about to notify 8,000 people in 47 yeah. time zones. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. Just tell everybody everything. I love it. Um, that's how we, you know, filter out anyway. Okay. Uh, so I want to bring this up as, as a next item on our agenda. This is an experiment that we're going to try. Um, it's not perfect, but we are, uh, we're going to try it and see the, the point of this file is to capture contributions that don't show up as a PR mm -hmm. in GitHub. So if you are spending time dedicated to chaos, that counts as a contribution. So if it's in a meeting, if you are um, creating project boards as our project managers do if you're opening issues those do kind of show up on your green square, but um, I feel like that's not quite enough. Um, so we just want to make sure that we are surfacing these kind of contributions giving people credit um, so I know a lot of employers just look at that github graph, you know that's something that people look at and value so any of those contributions that don't show up in a PR don't get counted. So we want them to be able to get counted. And that's why we have this file here. So if you have um, done something for chaos, it's not shown up in a PR, submit a PR and add your name, what you did, like the general area and what date you did it. And we're not gonna go back and like audit this and be like, oh yeah, no, they did not do this. No, I mean, this is the honor system here. So we trust you um, we trust that you will also be willing to self identify your own contributions because that's the point of you submitting the PR is that you get the credit for the the um, the change and um, that way it comes up under your account. Uh, and then one of us will merge it in so we'll see how it goes and it's, it's going to get long, we know that so we're going to figure it out later we'll break it up, however, we want to do it, but yeah Anita go for it. You are muted, Anita. We can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, I think that was a mistake. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay, Sophia, go for it. Well, I wasn't going to bring it up, but it's related to this, so I am going to bring it up now. Um, I was looking at, <laughs> relooking at our metric of types of contribution um, because we're also working on another project in extended Kubernetes community around how to recognize non-code contribution. Um, and so I have been encouraging folks in that call to look at that list of areas of contribution. Um, and when I was looking at it, I realized that we don't even have project management listed. And I'm thinking about the project management working group and all the folks here that have been supporting our project programs and projects. And that area of contribution isn't listed on our kinds of contribution, but then it kind of made me think maybe we should revisit that. And looking at this as like, I, I love this. I love that we're providing a way to start to capture these things. Um, but the first thing I'm thinking of now is within that metric, wouldn't it be great if we could associate each of these with one of those categories? And if we can't, that's a way to identify a hole in that metric um, to say when you wrote wrote a blog clearly that would fit into writing content. I think we have like a line item on that, but I'm not sure where um, to like some of these categories would fit. So I think maybe that's that's a way to stress, like I don't say stress test is not the right word, but like test it in practice. Um, can we actually associate all of these contributions with that forms of contribution metric? And if we can't, that is great feedback for that metric um, and would help us revisit and update it. So we would just add maybe a column on here that says, from, oops, from this list of types of contributions, what type was this? And if it doesn't fit it in, like, like say, 
it's not here and write underneath what you think is best or something yeah. like that. So like, cause that would be great. Cause then we could self select. And then if it doesn't fit neatly or if there's any like ambiguity, then, then we have that feedback. Is that, sorry, I know that's like adding more process here, but no, I no, think it, not at all. No, I think that's perfect. Um, so just to, for those who haven't seen this metric, thank you for linking that, Matt. I was about to go grab that. Um, this is the metric we have and we have, um, all of these and we don't have project management on that so that is actually let's make that uh, uh i can add that in oops if i can spell my own name right that'd be good add project management to our list of types of contributions okay yeah i love that idea Awesome. And then we can maybe do a blog post or some kind of analysis on it later to see like, yeah, we tried this thing and it's really helping or it doesn't help at all. <laughs> we don't know. TBD, contribution, attribution. Yeah. Yes, that's another um, great thing we can also reference in this doc here. So let me just copy that and just move it over here. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Love it. Sean, go ahead. I just wanted to mention um, later today, I'm having a conversation with a couple developers who are familiar with creating automations uh, to, to do updates like this. So there might be a way to do this a little bit lighter weight, um, just using like GitHub Actions or the equivalent GitLab functionality so that we don't have to do pull requests every time the document's changed. I'll, I'll report on that in the DEI meeting tomorrow. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, as long as people are able to get credit, that's really what yeah, I want. Yeah, right. I get credit for the... And I'm just looking for ways to make it lighter weight totally if we can. Yeah. If we can. <laughs> I love less work. That's, Me, I love that. I'm all about less work, so yeah. Yeah. Could you, Elizabeth, could you just go back to that community contributions marked up? Yeah, could you just show real quickly how to make a contribution here to this document? Uh, and like yeah. what the DCO would be required, I'm guessing, yeah. as well. Yeah. And then if I mess this up, I'll just edit it out of the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, I so already, I already submitted a pull request on this file. So can we, should we merge that oh, first? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my GitHub handle is not Don Foster. That's some random person who doesn't actually do anything on GitHub. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they just got credit on chaos. They they don't even know it. They're part of it. <laughs> it's Geeky Girl Don, right? It is Geeky Girl Don. It is, it is indeed, yeah. yeah. So I fixed it. You can just merge that and we'll be good. Okay. So I'm just going to... Do I have to... I'm not going to review it because... Well, I guess I could review it and show how that works. <laughs> no, that's all right. I'll just merge it. <laughs> There is another Don Foster. There, okay. was a, there was quite a famous one for a while. She was a um, uh, at the Guardian. She was a, a reporter and writer. Huh. Well, I'm I'm glad she didn't do anything nefarious and bring your name down. You know. With... <laughs> um. Yeah. So let's go back to this doc here. Where to go? So you would go here if you want to add your name and you've not really done this before. Um. We can also write this out for you as well which I think would be helpful, but I'll just run through it really quickly. Um, so you come to this doc, you can just click this little pencil thing here that says edit this file. And we're gonna say, uh, Elizabeth oops, N. Yeah, I'm not even Elizabeth N anymore. So that's super confusing because I'm Elizabeth N everywhere. Don't ever change your name, folks. It's pain. Um, facilitated the, well, the community meeting and it's just the chaos community i should have added that thing for you sophia I'll, we'll go back and do that um what's today january 23rd 2024 that's all you do you just kind of follow what everybody else has done it doesn't matter if you have extra spaces in there it, they don't care so then you're going to hit commit changes and it's going to you're going to get this pop up here 
And this is your message that's going to show up like of a high level of what what the whole pull request is about. So um, I'm going to just say adding Elizabeth uh, contribution. And then under the extended description, you can tell more about it if you want. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can. But here's the here's the kicker. You have to do this signed off by your name. Oops. And the email you have associated with your GitHub account. It has to match up and it has to look just like this. This has to be here. In the, in, it has to be here now. If you add it later, it won't find it because that's a mistake a lot of us make. <clears throat> you know who you are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Matt and I had a conversation about that. Anyway, um, so that's you have to have that in there. And it has to match. It doesn't have to be a public email on GitHub, but it does have to match what, what it thinks your email is. Um, and you're going to uh, oh, go ahead I'll add one thing to it your name should also match on the github profile so for example i write vinod k dot ahuja on my github profile and my full name is vinod kumar ahuja if i write full vinod kumar ahuja it will not match it and it will give you the error so the name that is on your profile in the github has to match also not only the email both things and I think it even has to look like that, like with the dashes, right? I think it, ha it has to do that too. So it's very picky, um, but if it fails, it's fine. We can fix it. It's not a big deal. We really can. Um, so as long as you have that there, you do proposed changes. I'm creating a new branch because I don't want to do it straight to main. Straight to main would just do it automatically with no merging allowed. So here's my pull request. Um, I don't need to add that signed off by again because it already knows that I did that. Um, so in this commit right here, it knows I did that. So I don't, I don't really need to add anything since this is super simple and I already have it right here. So I'll just do create pull request. It will fail. You have to write it again. <laughs> it doesn't fail oh, for me. Lucky for you, it always fails for me. <laughs> Whenever I do it, it always fails for me. I don't know why. You got the magic touch, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it did pass. So the, what it's checking for, is, this is called our DCO, and this is something that the Linux Foundation requires us to do as part of their project. Um, this means developer certificate of origin, which is basically saying that I have the right from copyright or whatever, I have the right to contribute this code. So I own this code, I wrote this code, I'm contributing it. And yes, I am the author of whatever I just did. So that way we can't get in trouble. So that's why we require it. Um, and then somebody want to merge this or I can merge myself if you want. Well, we can go. So like now it's here, it's under my pull requests because I submitted that, so. I'm in there right now, I'll merge it. Okay. Thanks for showing that. Yeah, no, you're welcome. I think it's important because I know it trips up a lot of people. So here it is right here. There's my thingy one minute ago. Thanks, Don. And if I go back here, here I am. Woo and the pull request is now closed. So there it was. Don merged it in for me. So it's all done. It's all set. Fine. So anyway, um, please add your contributions. Don't be shy. Please don't be shy because we really want to try this. And if everybody's too shy to submit theirs, then it's really going to fail. And I don't want it to. I want it to work or at least give us some kind of something to go on. Um, if you are a project manager, uh, I wanted to make sure that you are encouraging your folks to contribute or to add their contributions, including you, <laughs> including you, because I know setting up project boards and opening issues and figuring that all out is work. So please add your contributions for sure. Okay, any questions on that? I know that was a lot. So I foresee if this list is going to be very long. It is, hopefully, <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. That would be a great problem if we had that. That means people are A, contributing and not feeling shy about adding their name. So I think what we're gonna do is see how it goes and then go from there, whether it be we break it up by type of con contribution, by project, month of content, like, I don't know, there's a, a host of ways we can separate this document out. So I think we need just like a baseline of information of how things are coming through. I think that will help us figure out what to do next, but I totally agree with you, Vinod. 
So is this list only for those who are not doing the PR or is it for both? No, only for a, a, if it does not show up in a PR. So we've um, put a little uh, disclaimer here, what counts as a contribution? If you're spending it, it counts. Um, but if it's already captured in a PR, so if it is code or documentation or something that has already been captured somewhere, then it should not be here. This is just for things that don't have that, um, okay. don't have that mechanism. I see Don has also, so I know there was a plugin. I never could get it to work right, honestly. So I just type it in manually. I don't, I don't think it's a plugin. It looks like it's an org level setting. Like let's not do it in this meeting, but, right. um, but let's, let's look at that because it looks like an org level setting that we can set that would allow, allow it to just work. Okay. That would be great. That, that would be, I didn't even know. I, <laughs> I guess, honestly, I've, I've <laughs> never used the web interface to edit files. So I, I guess I didn't realize how onerous that was. Very. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I use both depending on what I'm doing. If I'm moving files, I use the GitHub uh, desktop. But if I'm just doing a quick edit, I just do that. I just do it on the web. It's just easier for me. But um, it's easier for everyone. <laughs> off, <laughs> uh, from automation from web interface. Does somebody want to take that action item? I'll, I'll look no. at it right now. Okay. And then if I can't figure it out, I'll message somebody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be great. Because I know this that, that whole process really does trip up our newcomers. Um, yeah. So if you've ever had problems with that, you are definitely not alone. I would, I would say, yeah. I would be surprised if nobody had ever had a problem with it. We'll just say that. Anything else on this? Okay, we do want to leave space for ChaosCon final thing since it is next week, which is super weird. It's already here, my gosh. But uh, just really quickly, I uh, want to let people know there is an accessibility repo now. We talked about it yesterday in our project managers meeting, and we just thought this would be the easiest place to centralize that work and really surface it. Because if you're an accessibility person, you're going to look for that. You're not going to go digging deep into other issues and uh, across rep repositories. So really, we're trying to um, attract folks who have accessibility experience as con as contributors. So we're putting it there, um, and also it kind of just consolidates everything because that work is spread out across a couple of multi uh, websites and other places. So um, I know Yiga and Peculiar are working on a contributing and README. So it's there, but it's pretty bare bones right now. But we just did want to give everybody a heads up that that's where that work is going to happen. Um, there's a big, huge spreadsheet of um, all of the things for the audit that they're doing. Um, so it is a pretty big job. And also it would kind of clog up other repos. So this way we can just have it all in one place. People can pick and choose if there's small changes they want to make, you know, so. And I work very closely mm -hmm. with them. So, I, you know, and I do a lot of the changes on the website, or at least I kind of know what's going on with it. So I can help be that bridge so people aren't, you know, we're not like running over each other, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Quick questions on that, anybody? There'll be more to come on that. Um, if you are planning to attend ChaosCon and you haven't registered yet, please do that ASAP because I wanna print off all the little name tag things. And if you don't register, you're not gonna get a name tag. Well, you will get one, but you'll have to write your name on there. And then you'll look, you know, like you were not, you just showed up, like you didn't even plan it, so. I guess, depending on how, what look you're going for, but I would appreciate, and also for food and everything else, we would really appreciate if you could just register, it'd be great. Um, and we will be live streaming on our YouTube channel. I think Sean and I have that worked out, so we can do that. I think it'll be, and we'll drop that link. Uh, if you don't know where our, our chaos tube is, it is right here. And it'll just be broadcast live here. So I'll drop this link here in our thing for those who want to just stream along with us um this was also a carryover from last week i just want to quickly mention um don had brought up we we have had some really great chaos cast pod, podcasts don do you want to say something real quick about these 
Uh, yeah, so I would encourage you, if you haven't listened to it already, the chaos goals for 2024 and beyond, in particular, um, talk about what we what the board decided we wanted to focus on for the next year. So if you haven't listened to that, I recommend giving it a listen. And I also did a really interesting one with, with Emma and Justin and James from the Microsoft team talking about how they use metrics. And they've been involved in chaos for a long time, and they do some interesting things with metrics. So that one also is definitely worth a listen. That's it. Thanks, Don. And did I see that you actually fixed this on our yeah. org? Yeah, it was an org level setting that you just changed. And I just did a test. I just did a test PR where I didn't type in that sign off. And it seems to have worked. So oh, I'm going to not, not merge that because I added a random space so that I could test things. So okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, close without merge, but I think, did, I did think, you see it ever or no, you don't even see it. It, it has a little thing that just says, um, that you have, that you're signing off on it when you, okay. Yeah. It says you're signing off on this commit as, and it had your email address. Oh, perfect. Can yeah. you give a demo? A quick one minute demo, if we have a time. Of what I changed? Yeah. Of what it looks like. It's something that only, oh, only admins would have access to. No, so like, no. Can, so. this like no, as a user, if I have to submit something, what will I see? Just add oh, a space. Yeah. yeah, just do that. For signing off. On so you have apparently multiple emails. I so. Yeah. Um, okay, awesome. Sign off and propose changes. <gasps> Done. <laughs> oh my gosh. I figured there had to be an easier way to do this. So I just, I duck, duck, go to it. Wow, that's Google. amazing. But look at that. I'm making people's lives easier. You are that on really the is change of time. What? Oh my uh, God, Don. Oh my God. Oh. We need to do a podcast and a blog. <laughs> Justin, holy cow. Don, <laughs> absolutely a life changer. Holy, I, I can't even, I, I can't even. Oh that just blows my mind how often, how long we've been at this. And, <laughs> and like just how many people have stripped up <laughs> and now it will not happen anymore ever. That's yeah, I will. I will say that this has been a thing since June 8, 2022. So we could have we could have fixed this, but it hasn't been it hasn't been out forever. It's not like this is always okay. Why, why didn't a, we yeah. missed it for 18 months. <laughs> Better late than never. From That's right. Forward, we are now streamlined and awesome. Rocking so and rolling. Thank you. thank you for doing that. Holy cow. Uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll definitely spread the word in the in the chaos community about that. And actually, I know other communities who have struggled with it as well. So yeah, sure. now we're going to look really smart. So thanks, Don. So we are super smart. That was pull request 600. Was it? Uh, it should have been more real, I guess, for such yeah. a long <laughs> occasion. Um, yeah. So I think we're done with this part of the meeting. If you are on ChaosCon planning mm -hmm. and you want to stick around, that'd be great. If you're not, you are free to go. And we will stop the recording.